So you want to build a Stirling engine, either for a school or university project, or simply for their own amusement. So you find a YouTube tutorial, the materials for the instructions, and it doesn't work. Now, if this situation sounds familiar to you, or you're simply planning to build a Stirling engine, then this video should help you with that. So the first thing is that you need to know what you're doing. And please don't skip this step, or you're like almost guaranteed to fail. You should understand what each part of the engine that you're going to build is going to do. I'm not saying that you become the next Stephen Hawking of Stirling engines. I am saying that you should probably go ahead and read a Wikipedia article, some websites, watch some YouTube tutorials, some videos, so you can get a general understanding of what it is you are building. And also so you can avoid fake tutorials, because let's say that the, the, the engine they make in the tutorial doesn't even have a power piston, so it would literally not work at all if you were to build it. So you can avoid all of that crap. More importantly, it allows you to spot simple but crucial mistakes that you may make when building your own engine that would likely lead to it not working. So now that you know what it is you're going to build and what each part of it does, you can select a design. And here you're, you're free to do whatever you want. I recommend a simple vertical design like this one if you simply want an engine that will work. But don't stick with a, with a single uh, video, tutorial, or purely my advice. Go ahead and watch multiple of them and analyze what the people do in their engines. Like look at how they make them, the displacers, the pistons, how complex it is or simple the design is, how they perform, how much heat they require to run. And like think, think of yourself like an artist using references to make a drawing. So the more you see, the more designs you see, the more ideas you get, the better the final product. So be sure to look at how multiple people make their things. Now, a few general tips I recommend is that you use steel wool for the displacer since it also acts as a regenerator, so that means your engine will run better. It is also lightweight and temperature resistant. And use a flexible material like a balloon for the power piston because it is far simpler and cheaper than use than a traditional piston. Now, here's the troubleshooting part. Pay close attention because these are the things that usually cause a stealing engine to not work at all. By far, the most important one are air leaks. They can completely kill off your engine's performance, sometimes not make it work at all, and they are hard to spot but not impossible. So first and foremost, operate the engine manually. That means disconnect the displacer from the crankshaft, apply heat, and move the displacer. The piston, the power piston of your engine should move, must move, as a result of you moving the displacer. You can even do this before building the rest of your engine to make sure that everything will work once you finish assembling it, but it's not a requirement. The point is, if the piston doesn't move at all, you have an air leak. If it moves, like it moves up or down and then quickly re uh, returns to its normal position, it deflates or inflates, you have an air leak. If it stays in its position or very slowly deflates, then you're good. But if it's not the case, then you should find the source of the air leak because it will simply not allow your engine to work. A common place for air leaks are on the hole that connects to the displacer. If this hole is too big, the engine will not work. If it's too small, there's too much friction. So it should be like an extremely tight fit for the wire or the fishing line or whatever you're going to use to connect to the displacer. Like as little gap as possible between the actual connection and the outside of the hole. If you still have an elic after, after uh, setting that out, Check the joint between the front and the back of the pressure cylinder, it must be very well sealed. No air leakage there at all. Same for the balloon on the power piston, check the balloon, check that there, no, there's no small holes on it that you haven't spotted. Check the connection from the power cylinder to the pressure cylinder. Check every place where you think there could possibly be an air leak. Seal them with glue, seal them with tape, do whatever you want to do, but make sure that no air leaks from any of those places. The only air exit that should be is a hole on the displacer where the connection to the displacer goes and it should be as small as possible. That is by far the most important part. For literally everything else, make sure that the displacer is a tight fit on the pressure cylinder, but not too tight as to cause friction. The displacer, if you let it go, it should fall on its own weight easily. If it doesn't, you have too much friction. Now, check the flywheel and the crankshaft for excessive friction too. You want no friction on any of the moving parts. Fric and lubricate them if necessary. Make sure the, the flywheel runs freely. Make sure the flywheel is heavy enough for the displacer to move if you spin it. Uh, make sure that the angles on the crankshaft are correct. It will no longer be 90 degrees if your piston is rotated relative to the power cylinder in your specific design. Like for example here on this horizontal design, the power piston is 90 degrees apart from where it should usually be, so that means that on the crankshaft there will also be a 90 degree difference, and that is something I forgot to check on my water-cooled stirling engine, and that led to an entire week of me wondering why it didn't work. So, careful with that. 
and check the stroke for the displacer and the power piston make sure that the flywheel is well connected to the crankshaft that it doesn't slip out and start spinning by itself and do all of these things and i can assure you will get a nice working engine use the internet if you so require for more specific problems and well good luck stay creative and thank you for watching